Hello friends, I hope you are well. There is a wide variety of hydraulic pumps, therefore, they are also classified in different ways depending on various factors. In this video we are going to look specifically at rotary pumps that are positive displacement. External gear pump. External gear pumps are a type of positive displacement rotary pump, let's quickly see some of the elements that compose it. Drive shaft is attached to its respective gear wheel. This shaft is the one that must be coupled to a motor, which can be an electric or combustion engine, which is responsible for supplying the rotary movement to the drive gear. Driven shaft, this shaft is attached to its respective gear which depends on the movement of the driving or driving gear. Support or pressure compensation bearings, this component is responsible for keeping the gear axis stable and thus avoid an imbalance or unbalance in the pump. The casing is the external structure of the pump, in which the internal chamber is located where the gears are coupled. This casing consists of an inlet hole that would be the suction or aspiration port, and an outlet hole that would be the pressure port. Gasket or butt seal, this component is located between the casing and the covers of the pump, and serves to isolate or prevent fluid from leaving the pump. As for the types of gears that the pump has, they can be straight, Helical or herringbone gears, the latter is also known as angular tooth gears. Of these three types, the most widely used and readily available are spur gear pumps. The number of teeth that each gear has will depend on the design, power, flow, and other parameters that the manufacturer may consider. The operation of this pump is as follows. The fluid enters through the inlet hole and is transported between the chambers that form the teeth and the housing wall. When the teeth come into contact with each other again, the fluid is forced out through the outlet hole. The high pressure existing at the pump outlet imposes an unbalanced load on the gears and shafts, therefore, these types of pumps are not hydraulically balanced. Volumetric losses in hydraulic pumps due to fluid leaks or because they are trapped between the gears reduce the so-called volumetric efficiency which can be calculated using the formulas shown. The volumetric efficiency can be obtained from the division between the actual flow rate and the theoretical flow rate. The theoretical flow is equal to the displacement or displacement multiplied by the number of revolutions. The actual flow rate is equal to the displacement multiplied by the number of revolutions multiplied by the volumetric efficiency. It must be remembered that the displacement or cylinder capacity is the volume of fluid, which can be oil, displaced towards the outlet per revolution. We also know that one revolution is equal to the 360 degrees angular rotation of the gear shaft. In this graph it can be seen that the increase in pressure decreases the volumetric efficiency, since, at higher pressure, the oil leaks in the pump are greater. If this parameter decreases, then the actual flow rate at the outlet will also be less. The displacement of each pump is specified in its technical sheet, but it can also be calculated. For this type of pumps, the calculation is quite easy. The volumetric displacement is equal to the outer diameter of the gear squared, minus the inner diameter squared, divided by 4, all multiplied by pi, multiplied by the width of the toothing. Remember to replace the data in this formula with the units in centimeters, otherwise you will have to do a unit conversion at the end. In some cases, the displacement is referred to as the supply flow rate. Just as there is volumetric efficiency, there is also mechanical efficiency, which is equal to the hydraulic power delivered by the pump to the system divided by the power supplied by the motor. From these we can obtain the total efficiency and therefore the flow rate of the pump. The total efficiency can also be obtained in another way. Let's see this example. Assuming that we have the motor coupled to the hydraulic pump, it can be assumed that the theoretical volumetric flow is the one entering the pump, and the effective volumetric flow is the one used by the system. Volumetric flow loss must also be considered. Remember that the volumetric flow is the flow. The mechanical power can be obtained by multiplying the torque generated by the engine by the number of revolutions. And the hydraulic power is equal to the effective volumetric flow, or real flow, multiplied by the effective or, relative, pressure at the pump outlet, so from there we have another relation to obtain the total efficiency of the pump. 
When purchasing a pump, several parameters must be taken into account such as pump flow rate, displacement or displacement, max continuous, RPM at continuous pressure, etc. External gear pumps can be found with flow rates from 20 milliliters per minute to more than 50 liters per minute, with pressures up to 500 bar. The conditions that the fluid to use must have should also be reviewed, such as recommended oil, viscosity, recommended oil cleanliness degree, oil working temperature, etc. All the parameters that I mentioned before can be obtained from the technical sheet of each pump, since all manufacturers provide that information. Internal gear pumps. The main elements that compose it are the following. Driving gear, it is a gear with external teeth, the motor is coupled to its axis. Internal gear, also known as crown or rotor, the teeth of this gear are on the inside. Crescent, this element separates the two gears, on the one hand, since the gears are eccentric. The casing is the external structure of the pump, this casing consists of an inlet hole and an outlet hole. The operation is as follows. The fluid enters through the inlet hole and follows its path between the gear teeth and the crescent, thus forming the pressure chambers. The liquid is transported to the discharge port. The meshing of the two gears and the reduction in clearance forces the liquid from the pump to pass through the discharge port. Some characteristics of this type of pumps are Constant displacement Low operating noise Reduced flow pulsation High performance at low revs Suitable for wide ranges of viscosity and rotational speed Gerator type pump The main elements that compose it are the following Internal gerator, the motor is attached to the axis of this element External generator the casing is the external structure of the pump, where the liquid inlet and outlet holes are located. The operation is very similar to the internal gear pump, with the difference that there is no crescent separating the gear teeth. The number of teeth on the outer rotor always exceeds the number of teeth on the inner rotor by one. Lobe pump. This pump consists of three lobes on each shaft which are surrounded by the external structure that is the casing. Its drive is independent by means of a gear system external to the pumping chamber. There are also two lobe pumps on each shaft. The operation of this type of pump is similar to that of the external gear pump. Fluid enters and is transported to the outlet port as indicated. Advantages of this type of pumps The lobes are driven independently by means of a gear system external to the pumping chamber. They offer greater displacement, but their cost is higher than other types of pumps. This pump is suitable for use with fluids that are more sensitive to the effect of tangential stress or shear. Excellent for handling fluids with trapped gases or particles. Well friends, this would be all. The study of the other bombs is pending for a next video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up so it helps me to continue creating new content. See you later. Bye-bye.